Testing. Ho, 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 ho. Wee, wee, wee. All right, testing, testing. One, two, three, one, two, three. The Wayne in Wisconsin stays mainly in the forest. Hmm? Hey, right, anybody here? What time is it? Can't find my glasses, man. Imagine being lost in the forest and you don't have glasses. Oh, so frustrating. Yeah, yeah. Must be in a pile of other glasses. All right, so it should be good enough. Don't expect me to yell out prices. <laughs> is it okay, Noodle, or is it awesome? Is it like, yeah, I can barely hear you, or it's like way awesome, clear? Which one? Ah. Uh. Uh, I'd like to thank McDonald's for uh, burning and over-roasting and then over-cooking their coffee. All right, you guys ready to go? Cool. Awesome. So, hey, welcome to Forex.today, the YouTube community of more than 18,000 foreign exchange traders stationed around the world. Today, we want to plug into the collective mind of our community. And look for things like support and resistance and maybe address things like entries, exits, maybe trader psychology, fundamentals, technicals. It's all fair game. I'd also like to remind you that trading is risky. It's not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily in indicative of future results. But Always be small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. So, guten morgen, let me switch over. Ooh, hey, good morning. Yeah, like I said, welcome to the forest of northern Wisconsin. Uh, less than a week ago, I was on the southern border of the United States. Here I am on the northern border of the United States. Inter interesting, huh? So, uh, very cool. So, please ask questions, get involved. Please click the like button if you enjoy the fact that I bring you on vacation with me and that I have to make special arrangements like doing a live YouTube stream from the banquet room of a hotel. Um, click the like button if you appreciate that I have to get up at 5.30 in the morning on my vacation so I can be prepared and ready to provide value to you. And then, of course, maybe click the like button if you just like the fact that we can get together and do our analysis every single day. If you like all that, please click the like button. Cool, right? Also, if you could, please visit tradersway.com, open up a demo account, download MT4 or MT5, play some trades, and uh, practice the skills that I preach to you every single day. And here's the upside for you. Over the course of a period of time, Tradersway might Earn your loyalty and respect through fast execution speed, low spreads, or big, uh, low spreads, no, yeah, low spreads, big swaps. And you're like, hey, cool, and customer service, very nice people, and above average good looking. Everything that you want, tradersway.com. All right, so now <clears throat> I can barely, <laughs> I don't know why I don't have glasses. I know I can't see anything, but I, I, I'm here. Okay, cool. So let's go through the world and see where we are. Just to step back, let's revisit where we were 24 hours ago. 20, well, and two days ago, we were approaching levels of support or resistance, depending on the angle, right? Great. Then yesterday, we were on levels of support or resistance, and I said this is not necessarily an entry, but definitely a place in normal market conditions where a bull or a bear, depending on the direction, right, would exit, would exit for profit. Now we can go through the world and see, well, are we in a reasonably normal market? Are traders behaving the way that we expect? And we, we have these expectations through the use of technical analysis. Everybody with me? Huh? Everybody say aye. Okay. We can start with this one. This is USD Kitty Cat. 
So yesterday we were at resistance. And in this case, we would look at it and say, look, this is clearly an uptrend. There's no doubt about it. You can use moving averages and you would say, technically, this is bullish. You could use, uh, I don't know, mean reversion analysis and say, all right, the, the slope of the mean is clearly above zero. Whatever analysis tool you're using, you'd probably look at this and say, up. Oh, okay, that's, that's because that's a lagging analysis. When you're using a leading analysis, it, it looks back and says, okay, it's been up. It's been up very strongly. It's been up for a very long time, weeks in fact, but it's going to stop right at this price. Okay. Are you happy with the tools that you're using to say, yeah, it's been up for weeks and weeks and weeks, but it's going to stop right here, right now at this price. And that's what we did yesterday. Hey, Knuckles. Oh my gosh. To have that. Oh my gosh. To have that available to you as a tool. Like again, it's not necessarily that you short here. It's that you took profit and all those pips now are in your pocket. It's more of a, a, a money saver than a money maker. I mean, you can counter trend this all day, but that's up to you. I, I wouldn't include that necessarily in my alpha. Okay. Cool. Neat. So, but let's pick a completely different asset class, not USD CAD, but WTI. Look, it's not even a currency pair. It's just West Texas intermediate crude oil priced in dollars. Okay. And this is not a four hour chart. This is a one hour chart. So there's quite a bit of difference here, right? Check this out. There's our bottom that formed exactly on the price. Exactly. And what we said yesterday is, look, you know, look, look, this is not necessarily a long opportunity, but it's definitely an opportunity to get out of a short for profit. Okay. I think we had this other, this thing here where I'm like, look, you could try again. Technically, it's still bearish. You can kick it off to 21 or something like maybe there's a day trade here. But I don't know. It's not necessary. And you can see why I feel that way. Okay. Coolio. Taking a look at Goldilocks. Oh, my gosh, that's what we wanted. So what do you want to do here? Okay. If you recall, we were uh, significantly above this roll reversal. And now we're back on the roll, roll reversal right here, right now. Okay. Big, big perm FX says, hey, rage till the end of the month. Uh, maybe, but again, I told you that four months ago. Yeah. That's the value, right? Big perm. Cool. So anyways, here's a roll reversal. If you're interested in gold, I would say if you're a bull on gold, there's two things that you could be setting up. I'm not sure my, my charts are going to let me. Oh, yeah. A little slow. It's all right. Patient, dude. Most patient supermodel you've ever met. Come on now. Are you going to grab that or not? All right. Well, uh, the other one would be the double bottom. Okay. Plan A, plan B. What do you think? Big Perm says buy it. Oh, look, it did it. Strange. In your strange. Okay. What do you think about that? If you're a bull. Okay. All right. Cool. So let's look at Biddy. Biddy is going up. I don't know if you can see the price. Um, like I said, I think I had like a fourth of a Bitcoin in my account. And I was I was worried a little bit about it yesterday that it was coming down. 
And now it's going back up, so I should be okay if it continues another day upward. That would be great. Okay, what do you guys think about Bitcoin? Up from here or back down? Right? I mean, dude, half of a Bitcoin. You got some reasonable exposure to this, right? And not leveraged, by the way. So I guess I don't have to freak out that much. If you had a half of Bitcoin, but you only had, <laughs> you know, 0 0.1 in cash or probably even less than that, huh? uh, it'd be worse, but no leverage, of course. It's weird to think, though, you're like, well, it's only half of a brand new Honda Accord. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, I guess so. Hmm. It's weird. All right. All right. So I don't know if, if you guys can hear me anymore. Am I still streaming? Uh, the chat seems to be lagging. So, uh, oh, no, it's catching up. Bradley says, uh, so USD CAD will fall further now. I never said that. What I said, Bradley, was if you were long USD CAD yesterday, we are at a point where you should probably take profit. Okay? There's a big difference. Okay? Just because I say one is going to get out, it doesn't mean the other bulls on USD CAD should really seriously consider taking profit. If they bring, if they take profit, you're going to see some red candles. It doesn't mean people are selling. See, there's a difference. Okay. All right, cool. I guess it's a little slow, but hey, better than Florida, right? Uh, let's see. Let's see. What are some of these things? Should we do Euro here or somewhere else? I uh, can't see what that is. Did this one. So let's move over to more USD. Coolio. Let's see what we have here. This is from quite a while ago. We're, we're approaching. In fact, we've hit my target, but we didn't get the pullback. Sorry. Do I do I get do I get to call this as mission achieved, a mission accomplished? Look at that. How did I do? I didn't get the pullback. I was wrong there. Remember, that's what I would like to happen. That's what I would expect to see happen doesn't have to happen. But how did it react to the price target that I drew days ago? Okay. It catches uh, BTC longs, maybe not so good. Yeah, well, the thing is I can't do anything about it on the road, right? Okay. So Bradley said, yeah, so you shorted USD CAD yesterday and made a great return. Well, look, it's a counter trend trade. So if you made a great return, you, you're, you're screwing up. <laughs> That's one. Greg, congratulations on the, uh, is number two. But uh, you're not supposed to make a good return on a counter trend. Now, you might argue that it's a double top and it's setting up. Okay. But once again, one trade should probably never have a good return because what you should do is take the first trade. Let's say the first trade is a double top. There's some risk associated with that first one. Okay. So you take the first one, then it makes a lower low. Well, that's all the first trade was betting, right? You were essentially saying, look, this is a, a place where this market will reverse. So you take a shot. Because you already have that bias, so you understand why it would reverse there. Cool. And that predicts the lower low. So you get the lower low. Great. 
Then it makes a lower high, and that's what the double top predicted. So you take a shot on the lower high. So now you got one at the double top and one at the lower low. And now you see how if you can now scale your position and build it up into a portfolio, maybe you could have a good return. Okay, but every individual trade should be insignificant. Remember, we're only, look, if you do 2% a month, if you're, if you're profitable, 2% a month, put this in, in your mind. If you are profitable, just 2% per month, you are one of these trading advisors in the United States. And by one of the best, I'm like top three of all the licensed and registered Forex traders in the United States trading either over 100. If you're doing 2% a month, you're in the top three, not top 3%, top three dudes or ladies that are professional Forex traders. So if you're like, I made 1% on this double top trade yesterday, Bradley, like, no way, right? But it shows you they're more worried about losing money than they are trade uh, making money. So they're much more worried about risk because they already have money. And people that don't have any money, they take on the risk because they're focused on returns. Yeah. Oh, good. So you nailed it, Bradley. So congratulations. Cool. Good job. All right. Again, we're in uh, out position. Did we do this one on the other chart? I can't see. Oh, USD yen. Okay. So what this is showing is yen was strong. And now yen is weak. Okay. Now, the, the question I always like to answer is why? Why should I have confidence in maybe rotating into yen pairs? And the confidence comes from this. Oops. Well, not that. It's the wrong tool. Hang on. There we go. The confidence comes from this. Okay, congratulations. You have been taught, right? Given the tools and taught how to use the tools properly. On says, so as a dollar bear, we don't have anything trade to trade right now, not fundamentally. On, so you've been given permission since the June 16th Fed meeting to shoot at rabbits, which means you're pure technical. And the trades you're taking are not based on long-term fundamentals. There are no long-term fundamentals if nobody's trading the fundamentals. And all the big traders are gone. All the banks are you know, not putting on those types of positions. Hedge funds are out raising money. So now it's only technical, which means if you're in a trade for three days, four days, that's a good trade. Okay. But don't have delusions of grandeur that your trade is so good that you're going to be in it till the end of the year. It, it might occur, but that's going to be mostly luck. Hey, luck is good, um, but it's also bad. So if you trade properly, like I just, I wrote this paper, right? So I woke up early yesterday. I was up at five or something, did this webinar, took my kids to the lake, got back to the hotel and uh, smoked a Cohiba on the end of a dock with my laptop plugged in to a, a boat's power source. And I wrote a paper. And what I had to do is analyze in and out of sample data of a trading system uh, that traded the DAX over the course of 12 years. And then you had to change the, the data set and samples a few times and change the look back period a few times and look at the, the sharp ratio, both in and out of sample. So basically, you know, you can consider it like back testing um, and had to write a paper and it had to do with really two things. How can you make more returns without taking risk? Uh, and how can you reduce the volatility? But when you combine those twos, uh, those two things, what you're ultimately looking at is um, how do you reduce your risk? 
and still get compensated appropriately. Isn't that interesting? So having sort of, if you look at that, they were based on daily candles and all that kind of stuff. Now, that's a very simple algo, but if you could incorporate, uh, and I didn't suggest this to them because I don't want to give them my alpha, <laughs> but um, when I gave like six suggestions on how to improve their algo, but one of the things I didn't tell them is if you incorporated seasonality into DAX, you could lower the volatility and you're likely to have at least the same return, maybe greater. And by that, think of this. Think of one year cycle in the DAX. I think you would find that are, there are periods in time when liquidity is high, meaning there's lots of traders trading. And there are periods of time in the DAX, the German stock market, where liquidity is lower. And we call this seasonality if there's a recurring pattern of when these periods of liquidity and low liquidity take place, right? And of course, I believe you would find that. So then you could take it further and say, if you have strong signals during the high liquidity times, you would add more, you'd take more positions. You would be overweight, okay? And then periods of low liquidity, I would then say, A, reduce the amount of trades that the algo could take, which means you're not going to take a bloodbath if it goes against you. But then I said the second one is uh, pick a direction, right? So you trade less and you trade with a bias. Okay. Or at least you look at the trend data. So they use a, a different types of indicators we've been looking at. But whatever you're using, look and even expect for a change of trend and then change the algo. And then wait for it to come back. So again, you'd have to program, what does that mean? Well, a resumption of that previous trend using the old tool, whatever that tool, whatever indicator it is. And then look for the volume and volatility to come back and then rebuild those positions. Again, going from, you know, equally weighted, let's say, uh, to overweight during the trend, then to like reduce the position, so take profit trade less, and then be prepared to rebuild again to get back to at least equally weighted from underweighted, and then be prepared to be overweighted. And what you would see is in times when you expect to make a lot of money, you try to make a lot of money. And the, the more money creates a greater return. But I think the secret sauce is when, you, when there's no volume and volatility, it's not to, to make money. It's instead to lower your volatility, and, and to do that, you would have less exposure to the market, a.k.a. you don't trade as much. And at the end of the year, what you've done is lowered your volatility during the good times and underweighted during the mediocre times. Your returns are likely to be higher, but with lower volatility and therefore a better sharp ratio. Now, with that speech being done, who cares about an algo? I care about you. You're my sweet baby. So how can you incorporate a, at least a logic like that into your forex trading? And that goes back to the question like, On says, hey, wait, what? Is a dollar bare that we shouldn't do anything? Well, that's one part of it. <laughs> like, uh, I'm not recommending that, but that's one thing you could do and say in a, in a situation where the dollar is strong, and by situation, I mean, you use your analysis of, you know, use technical analysis to say, oh, my God. Oh, God, as Kanye says. Um, these market conditions, technically speaking, do not favor my bias. Therefore, I should not trade. That is one safe assumption. You could do that. Okay. The second thing you could do is say, well, I understand why it's occurring, so I give my, my I give myself permission based on my rules of engagement to behave differently during this period, and then resume my normal trading style or strategy when that volume and volatility returns. 
And so what I say is when 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 all market participants are trading and we have good trends, shoot at big game. Why are you shooting at rabbits when you could take down a moose or a mastodon? Okay, you got to feed the village. But in a period where those animals are not anywhere near where you are, there's no migration occurring, then yeah, don't waste your time hunting for days and days and days without seeing a moose. There are no moose. What are you doing? Instead, stay close to home, shoot at rabbits, shoot at squirrels, go fishing, okay? And you're just taking care of today. The moose and the mastodon take care of the whole winter, right? And the, there will be a normal time of year when they do cross your path. And then don't shoot at rabbits. Instead, like why spend your whole day setting up traps when you should have a spear and you should be out in the field looking for a moose, okay? So you got to have like the right strategy. And if you think about it that way, there's times in the year where you should be setting up snares all day. And it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. And if there's other times a year where you should be out in the field two or three days from home hunting, okay? Bringing back protein, meat, okay? You got it? All right, great. Speech time. So with that in mind, let's flippity floppity over to Yin Yin. Yin Yin, talking about Yin Yin. Yin Yin. All right, let's see. Let's zoom in. Okay, how did I do yesterday? Good coach or bad coach? I said yesterday, we're at exactly the price in which I believe a bear, and it is a bearish market, should exit the market. Here's where they sold, and here's where they should get out. How did I do? Hmm? At least there should be a situation where you tell your subconscious, which is part of being a trader, you have to talk to your subconscious all the time, and say, subconscious, subconsciousness, let me tell you something. I am very happy to have pivot points. I'm very appreciative of these pivot points. Most of the time, they give me very reliable information in which I can incorporate into my trading strategy. They help me identify trend and sentiment. They help me identify entries, and they also help me identify exits. And let me tell you, subconsciousness, I'm very happy, very confident in, to have these tools. And I will continue to use these tools to the best of my ability. Thank you, subconsciousness. Look at that. That's cool. That is cool. See, if you didn't know that, you just got blindsided by a trend. And you're like, wait, what? What happened to my trend? I sold five times in a row and made money, but on the sixth one, I gave money back. Uh-huh. Cool. So once again, now we're looking at Euro Yen. Oh, wait, what? And this is all about potentially turning the ship around. Now, think of it as an aircraft carrier. It's not easy to turn the ship around. Okay? Takes a while. And I think we're in that process. Um, this doesn't say it, though. All this says is people sold a downtrend at the central pivot. No duh. Okay? And that they're taking profit at the M1. No, duh. I mean, that's, dude, you don't know how that to do that. You're not trading properly. This third part of this, though, is it doesn't tell you up. Okay. It tells you, you we hit our trade early. So look at the Monday uh, counter trend trade. Okay. But it doesn't say that we're, we can't keep heading down. In fact, we can keep heading down. Okay. And when I drew this, I said, look, this would be a. But I said, it's too early. And I gave you a story. 
of how I felt like that in previous setups in previous years where I get a good technical setup, but I know based on seasonality, it's too early. And that's a difficult place to be in. I think what I drew in, in red is what I want. But I, I don't see why this can't head down to S2. Why not? That would be next week's trade, in fact, wouldn't it? Okay. Next week's trade would be front running a sell off the M3 with a target of M1, which you could argue is confluence with S2, monthly S2. Right on, Johnny. That's a really good use of your time, of anyone's time. Okay, you got to know when you, you have to stop and sharpen your saw. Otherwise, you end up being a very mediocre lumberjack. Which is funny because I think you sent me an email once on how to keep my chainsaw sharp. <laughs> Shade. All right. Okay. Chickity check this out. Here's the four hour. Okay. What do you think about that? Um, here's the thing a bull would have bought the dip here, which is fine. It's good. Okay, that would have been earlier today. So that's the London Open. So you either did it or an Asia fade, whatever you want to call it. So you either did this or you didn't do this. There's nothing really you could do now. Um, the reason you can't really do anything about it now is check this out. And this goes back to like Johnny saying, hey, I did the price action, redid the price action course. Well, the price action course would tell you heads up, shields, red, you know, shields up, red alert. Right? Mm -hmm. Hope you guys are enjoying your summer. Huh? I hope every single day you're able to do, uh, let's say, two hours of trading and three hours of study, like actively watching a course, taking notes, or reading a book about trading and taking notes, not just passing time. Okay, that's the minimum I'm doing. Minimum. So no matter where you are. You got at least five hours of productivity as a current summer when things are slow. That would be the minimal acceptable performance. Okay. Okay. So, anyways. This is what the charts tower. It's it's looking like this. Okay, everything else is quite aggressively down. Yeah, winter down there. I suppose it's similar but different. Okay. 
Cash says uh, that the yens are heavily bearish right now. Yes, and they have been. Okay. And based on seasonality studies, it, it's a period in time where yen is often stronger this time of year than yen is in other types of year. We also know and already expected, okay, that July pivots are going to be wide, okay, that or, or the July range will be right, uh, wide, which will widen the August pivots. The one one of the things we already talked about in the swing trading course, I don't know, two or three months ago, when we were preparing mentally and psychologically for summer trading was that we already anticipate S1 and R1 monthly pivots to be the range in August. Right? So cash, so we've already, what you're saying is right, but we already talked about that six, seven weeks ago. Okay? So now it's like, okay, we already know that. So the next thing is to adjust our expectations for August, and then we already know in September, we're probably, instead of going for R2, we're probably going for R3. But we've already talked about that for two or three months, two or three months ago. So like, yeah, I get it. But the swing trading group has already planned all of that out, already discussed it. We even, I even uh, two months ago had people plan all the way out, right? So we were, I think we were in March and I had the, I had them plan uh, April, May, and June, for example. I think it's kind of cool. So right now you should be, if we're in July, you should already have really planning August, September, and October. Planning, using your tools and making general assumptions. We call that a model. What do you think will happen based on the Fed policy? What do you think will happen based on Fed meeting schedules, right? The dates that they happen. What do you think will happen based on... Um, Macroeconomics, what do you think will happen based on um, monetary and fiscal policy in the United States, both in the regular economic data type releases, but in the high frequency type stuff, like the right, like uh, how much money is in the bank? How much credit is available on credit cards? And are people going to spend their money or access their credit? in the future and if so with whom so what kind of stocks will the stock market go up what kind of stocks um, will people consume which we know is the c in gdp and you're like there's no c in gdp well gdp is equal to c plus i plus g plus exports so we you have to then plan is there going to be future consumption will right or will there be future investment Okay. And what we're trying to do is, is turn savings into investment so that we can have investment higher than depreciation. But right now, we know that banks are flush with cash, but there's low loan demand. So we're not converting savings into investment. Well, that sucks. So then maybe the savings will be converted into consumption. Yeah. Oh, is, is that right, Cash? Well, Cool. All right. All right. So anyways, uh, so these are the things that you should be doing uh, and thinking about. And and based on your thought analysis, what direction will the market go? Cool. Well, less than half of you have clicked the like button. Would you click the like button for me? I got up at 5.30 in the morning on my vacation. And I'm sitting in a banquet room at a hotel. I had to leave the hotel to buy myself coffee. Because the break, the, 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 the lounge or whatever you call it, isn't open yet. Hmm? All because you're my sweet baby. So uh, please show it, huh? Come on. Come on now. And let's see. 
So I think we did gold and oil and Bitcoin. And we did dollar pairs and yen pairs. Hmm? I think that should be uh, good enough, as they say, huh? Good enough? So let's see. I was on the Gulf of Mexico uh, a week ago. And then I was in Chicago over the weekend. Now I'm in northern Wisconsin. And now tonight I am going to be on my way to Milwaukee to, um, I got invited to party with the Milwaukee Bucks. And I'm like, okay. So anyway, so I'll be in Milwaukee tonight and then uh, flying home tomorrow. Now there's been changes in flights. And uh, which is another way of saying it's not my fault, man. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to do the swing trading group meeting tomorrow because of flight changes. And we just live in this world where if you book a flight six months ago, you would have received about 12 emails of the flight changes and the, the schedule has changed once again.